Okay, guys, um, this is the uh, uh, first part of our Israeli tactical entry or Israeli CQB uh, uh, training series. Um, in this course, I'm going to take you through exactly how we do uh, tactical entry in Israel. Hey guys, um, welcome to, uh, to our, our little training facility here. Um, this course is going to uh, give you guys the, the fundamentals of how to do Israeli tactical style entry, um, also known as high threat CQB. Um, this particular style of CQB that we're going to be teaching you guys is really different from anything that you've ever seen before. I'm not going to be showing you guys how to run into rooms. We just don't do that. There's a reason. Um, disclaimer, everything you guys are going to be learning uh, from me and my instructor staff uh, here at Cherries is designed specifically for counterterrorism. Okay, this isn't a typical or a, a, a conventional, even reality based style method of shooting. I'm not teaching you guys a style of tactical entry. Okay, what I'm teaching you guys, or what I'm going to be showing you guys, is an entire doctrine born from terrorism. That means that everything that you guys are going to be learning from me is based on counterterrorism, right? These are taught to uh, select units, uh, uh, tier one units inside of Israel. And I'm going to be taking you A through Z of how we do tactical entry. It's very different than anything you've ever seen. Uh, come to this video with an open mind. Um, there, it, it's not fancy. It's not sexy. But again, uh, my goal is to get it so that you guys can get a couple of different things and take it from us and then be able to add it to your tactical toolkit. All right, this specific uh, method of tactical entry, again, is based purely for counter-terrorism operations, okay? That can involve somebody trying to blow themselves up, uh, somebody who opens fire on a crowd, or uh, for you uh, uh, law enforcement guys out there who may be part of an SRT or a SWAT or SWAT unit, um, this will be good for, uh, for doing um, uh, high-risk entries. Again, this is modeled purely for terrorism. It's very different than anything you guys have ever seen before. Um, but uh, we're going to take you through A to Z exactly how we do this in Israel. And uh, so just again, um, you know, you guys can pause and play and pause and play. Uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy some of the new stuff you're getting. And again, we just want to be able to give you some new and different ways to approach your entry work. Stand by. Okay, guys, um, real quick, I just want to give a, a, a safety disclaimer. We're, for the purposes of this video, we're actually in a completely closed sterile training environment, okay? We have this whole facility to ourselves to be able to film this. It's really important to remember that if you're ever gonna do any training, whether it's airsoft or, or, or live ammo, you wanna have proper eye protection, then you also obviously wanna have proper ear protection. Uh, in this case, um, we're firing at actual balloons uh, through uh, targets that the balloons are mounted on, which have no backing. So that the actual BB, uh, plastic BB, uh, passes through the paper and then uh, hits the ground pretty quickly. So for all intents and purposes for this training video, um, I've made the decision to not wear my glasses. I prefer it, but I want to make it really clear that whatever type of training you're doing with Airsoft uh, or out in the live range, make sure you have proper eye and ear protection. It's really important. You don't want to get injured in training. So um, uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, guys. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start breaking down uh, what it was that you actually saw. We gave you a lot of different coverage um, because it's important to 
uh, see how, not only how this looks, but why we're doing it the way we're doing it, okay? Um, how we actually do entries in Israel, again, this is purely based on counterterrorism. Let me start with this, okay? The only thing that enters a room enters at 2,200 plus feet per second, okay? That's the round. We never actually step foot into the room, okay? The reason why is because uh, we're doing what's called a limited penetration technique, okay? And essentially, that involves me looking at the door frame differently than anyone typically looks at the door frame. What I mean by that is instead of actually seeing it, there's a lot of terms I've, I, I've heard for years, and I've been training SWAT and Spec Ops units uh, for years, and, and, and this, uh, the, the entry is commonly referred to as the funnel or the fatal funnel. It is fatal. It is fatal. And because it's fatal, we don't run into it or through it. The reason why is because based on our studies, and have a look on YouTube at SWAT teams making entries, okay? Start pulling up the videos. What's the first thing that happens when a SWAT team is stacked up outside of a doorway, and they all, they're all, usually all stacked this way, and the reason why is because they're preparing to bring their muzzles up and run into the room. There's a couple different ways they do it. One crosses this way, one crosses this way, one goes high, one goes low. There's three or four different ways to do it, okay? But we've all seen the same tactics kind of going up and down the tactical food chain, which is what I like to call it. Um, but if, in fact, this funnel is fatal, which we agree it is a very fatal area, we believe that the best thing to do is to never actually move into the room. The reason why is because you don't need to, okay? And you guys are going to be listening to this right now, you're going to go, oh man, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I got it. it listen. I tell, I, like I said before, these are, these are tactics designed specifically for terrorism, okay? We're talking about an active shooter inside or a hostage situation or some type of high-risk warrant where the person inside does not care if he dies. Let me say this again. He doesn't care if he dies. So, knowing that this is a fatal area, we never want to put ourselves in a position where we're even forced to run or move into the room. The reason why is because if you actually make an entry into a room, you're now relying on one thing, your gunfighting ability. It's 50-50. If I run into this room on this or that balloon, okay, the moment I expose myself, I have no cover. So at this point, as I'm moving, which means I have to be very good at shooting while moving, okay, I have to be able to pick up single or multiple threats very rapidly and be able to engage them. But at this point, it comes down to pure gunfighting skill. Okay? Now, obviously, if we don't know what's inside the room, that gives us a disadvantage. So now we have one element working against us. The other element we have working against us is the, is the natural chemical flight reaction of rounds if they start to get fired into the doorway. And I don't care how tough you are or how many operations you've been on, but if somebody starts to shoot out the doorway, your natural instinct is going to be to pull behind the frame. You may engage, but if he starts to fire at you, there's a good chance that you're going to get subdued or neutralized. We don't want to ever get into a one-on-one -on -one gunfight and have to rely purely on our skill and our ability to be able to zero in on multiple threats rapidly and then have to stuff, stuff multiple guys into this room, okay? And again, there's different versions of doing this room entry. One guy uh, all the way down the hallway and then pushes up, another person, and then the second guy will come in and he'll pick up all this stuff in here. I, I don't like it. We don't like it. And the reason why is because chances are if there's a threat inside the room and it's terrorism, they're going to begin firing at you. You want to be able to pick up and neutralize everything that you can immediately see in front of you. In this case, this is how I set up these targets, okay? So again, go on YouTube, go look at the videos. A SWAT teams about to make entry, some guy with some whacked out guy with an AK-47 or a pistol or, or some other type of assault rifle, a carbine, starts firing out the doorway, which is again a fatal funnel. What's the natural reaction? Go watch what happens in those videos. I don't care how tough you are, how many operations you've been on, your natural reaction is going to be to pull away from the doorway so that you don't get killed. Watch what happens to this SWAT team as they're about to make entry at this bank in Buena Park. Notice how they pull away as soon as the shots fire. And when police move in, he proves it.
When the rescuers reach the door, the suspect immediately starts shooting. So we've taken that actual uh, first step of what your natural reaction is going to be when the rounds start to get fired. And again, this is specifically for terrorists. They will fire at you. They will know that you are coming to assault them at some point. Whether they're holding hostages, uh, Waxman in the 90s uh, was being held by Hamas, okay? Um, and there's mo many more examples, okay? So instead of playing the odds of 50-50, let me see if I can get him and get him first. Meanwhile, pop, 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 I'm getting shot and killed. The second guy moving in behind me also is getting picked up, okay? And I will prove this as we get farther into this video uh, training series, how easy it is to fire at guys who are running into rooms if you know they're coming. Okay? So instead of trying to get into a one-on-one -on -one gunfight with the threats that are actually aiming at the fatal funnel, again, remember, it's been called the fatal funnel and it's internationally recognized as a fatal funnel, don't run into the funnel. What I just demonstrated before was a way to get your barrels on the threats just as quickly, but instead of actually moving and shooting, I'm standing and shooting. Why am I standing? It's more accurate. I can also, I'm also using what's called a point method or instinctive shooting. Everybody's born with the ability to point and we're going to get into a uh, specific Israeli tactical carbine. We're going to be adding that course. Okay. But for now, uh, this is for you LA guys or for your Leos out there and for you operators out there who just want a different way of looking at room entry based on what we've learned from the last 30 years of dealing with terrorists. Okay. So instead of running into the room, we're actually looking at the door frame of the room as two individual pieces of cover, okay? Now, there's a difference between drywall and there's a difference between the outside of a building, which is typically brick and mortar. It's gonna give you a lot more stability. Inside of an actual structure, okay? Obviously, if it's drywall, in this case, it's uh, plywood. It's a, lot less, uh, 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 it's a lot less strong. So technically, yes, you can be shot through this wall, but you can't be shot any more through this wall than you can if you're standing in the funnel and moving towards the threat. It's still 50-50. I would rather, or we would rather, at least have the ability to keep ourselves covered so that they cannot see us. The only thing that ever is gonna be exposed at any point during this entry when I start to uh, break it down, the only thing that comes over the wall is my barrel and my left eye. My body, okay, will always stay covered. That's how we do this out intro right here. I'm gonna demonstrate it and I'm gonna walk you through it as I'm doing it, I'm gonna do it really slowly, okay? I'm dividing this room right now into two separate parts of cover. My chest will always be behind at any given point. My vital area, my chest, my thoracic cavity will always be protected by the frame of the door. And frames on most doors are pretty stock or stock in most buildings, okay? My crew's not.